right, so it's really nice that we have this auto save feature, but we now have a new challenge as a result. And that is in this add recipe method here, All right? So if I type out taco and wait a second, it actually generates it automatically for me. And it didn't redirect me to this new taco page instead, like as in the URL, instead it actually replaced the form element with that new URL. Now, even though this is unexpected behavior or at least behavior that we don't want, it should be somewhat expected on how it actually runs. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Now, first in forms.py, I actually left it with that data in there. I wanna get rid of that. So it doesn't actually auto trigger on those forms, right? Or any of those inputs in that form. Now we could totally use this and you know, you might consider having a create form and an update form. You might at this point consider having two different kinds of forms, but I wanna leave it in as one form. I don't think we need this kind of trigger at all. The next thing is inside of forms.html, we wanna change what this trigger is. So it only comes up if the form has an instance itself. Now you might recall, we actually did do something like if object, we did have an object passed in here, but I wanna make this more general. So if we do form.instance, this will actually allow me to check if there is an instance in the form or associated to the form. So like in the view, what we see with our update view, we actually pass the instance in there. So really this context of this object never needs to be passed. If there is an instance in the form, you can actually access it directly from the form itself. So that's kind of cool as well. A little bit of Django tidbits there. So now when we do this, we actually should no longer see refreshing in here, those items in there. So if I inspect the element, this will actually show me. We show, we see this trigger is actually showing the change is still in there, so that's not good. Uh, but the inputs themselves do not have that anymore as well. So why is it that it's showing that? If I refresh in here, it's still showing it. So what if I did if form.instance.id, save that, now what we should probably see is it gone. And sure enough, it is. Okay, so in this case, it's just looking to see if the instance has an ID, which of course is something that would be referencing if it's stored in the database at all. Because form.instance, I believe, will actually give us back the string of none. And technically, the string of none is not the same thing as none necessarily. So we just want to do form.instance.id. So again, if we look at form.instance, we see it gives me this right here, a receipt object, or recipe object, excuse me. Um, so yeah, the ID will give me a actual none value instead of this, this string representation right here. So now we no longer have that auto save here. So I can actually create something new. Let's go ahead and just do taco and hit save. We still have this problem. This is actually 100% should be expected because of what we now know of HTMX. So what's happening here? We go into the view for the create view. This is what's happening. Right, so the initial create view actually renders out the HTML like it normally would with Django. Then we look in this form is valid here and it actually returns a redirect based off of whether or not it's Django. So this entire form assumes that none of it is HTMX. So we just need to come in here and say if request.htmx. But I still want this redirect to happen, right? So how do I actually go about doing that? Well, it's actually fairly simple. We can return an HTTP response doesn't really matter what's in the response, just say created or whatever. What matters is the headers that we're gonna pass in here. So we're gonna do headers and we'll do hx-redirect. And that's gonna be the actual path to our newly created object. So that's gonna be what this does right here. And so now in our HTTP response, we can actually pass in those headers. So we can save it. And now if it's a HTMX request, it will prompt the browser to redirect for us. So let's go ahead and come back into this crate here. And I'll go ahead and now do uh, taco again. Can you tell that I like tacos? Anyways, so we hit save. Now it actually redirects me to the proper recipe. <laughs> That's I think just there's so many things in here that are just like so much fun to work with when it comes to HTMX. Of course, if you've never seen any sort of Ajax or JavaScript, maybe the appreciation is lost on you. But at the end of, at the, end of the day, uh, this makes it actually really clean and easy to add new recipes and move where we need to move.
Now, another option that you could totally have is instead of returning a redirect at all, you could actually render out the detail view itself, right? So we could actually, you know, grab all of, essentially all of this data, uh, but more specifically, it'd be the partials detail. It'd probably be something like this, the request detail given, well, we would have to check what's going on in there. It looks like this is actually what we could end up rendering. So let's take a look at that instead as just another option. And so um, we're gonna go ahead and comment this out for a moment. I'm actually gonna leave that redirect in there. Um, and then now what we wanna do is we're gonna return essentially this right here, or at least maybe. And so the context itself is going to just be the object. So context equals to object and OBJ. So the reason I use object in all of my contexts is number one, Django does this in a lot of their other kinds of views. But number two, then I don't have to think at all, hey, this is a model form, I know that much, and I'm getting an object here. I don't have to think what the context variable should end up being, right? So that's always why I end up doing that. Okay, so we save this. Let's go ahead and take a look at that now. And now I'll go ahead and say roast beef tacos. Okay, and we hit save. Now it's actually showing me that new item here, right? Uh, unfortunately though, the URL is in the, the wrong place. So we can actually change that as well, but it starts to get a little bit more com complicated. Uh, the way to change it would be to add a header. So instead of the redirect header, what we can use is an hx-push header, uh, push like this. And so we can use that header as well as rendering out our own template. You'd have to use the HTTP response, but you could totally add it in just like that. Now, something you might try using your intuition would be to pass in headers equals to those headers, and you can even try it that way as well. So let's go back and create, and I'll give another taco. We hit save, and yeah, notice nothing happened. So in our console, we get an error. So this, re this render method is not a shortcut to doing HTTP response. Uh, it's a few other steps to actually get to that point. Something I'm not gonna cover at this time, but it is a good thing to know that you can use push to push it to a different place. Um, and of course you could test it out. I recommend actually testing it out on your own. But of course for us, we're gonna just use the redirect here. So simply just HX redirect and that should work for us now, again, and it does. And of course, if you are curious about this, you can look for response headers, just do a search on HTMX, and you can see the various response headers that are on here. Notice you can also trigger another event, right? So very similar to what we've seen already with various triggers, right? So similar to that, which I think is also pretty cool. All right. So that's actually how we are going to create things going forward.